I'm Grant. Welcome to Second Plate. Tonight we're going to be making chicken cordon bleu and the reason I wanted to do this recipe is because we just recently had Easter and I always come home with lots of leftovers and then it always seems to be ham, which is perfectly fine uh, all on its own. But I wanted to see if like what could I do to actually make that into a dish. Like I really love being able to kind of upscale leftovers into a better thing and chicken cordon bleu is a great mix to have something where I have everything in my kitchen already, I get to kind of feature the ham, I get to make something that is fancy itself but doesn't take too much time so it seemed like the perfect fit for this little leftover and uh, it was actually something I've been looking forward to because I actually had no idea how this was made before I tried it. So what I have laid out here is I have some baby Swiss for our cheese, I have some simple thick cut ham, this isn't literally the leftovers but uh, this is ideally would be from say like a uh, glazed ham, what have you. You can also use thinner sliced deli ham. Really, it's entirely up to you, whatever you happen to have around. Then I'm gonna be going through and breading it and then just kind of toasting it in the oven for a little bit. So I'm going to actually start by making my egg wash just so I have it ready for the breading. I'm just gonna take two eggs, crack them in here. And I'm going to whisk them. Add a little milk. This isn't necessary, but uh, when I was looking into how to properly do egg wash, it was kind of interesting how you can kind of really do it your own way. It's like some people seem to exclusively do egg whites, some people will put cream in it, some people will do water instead. And all it really does is affect the color that this comes out as, and then that has a very slight effect on the look of whatever you, you are using it on. So like the main thing I'm used to using egg wash on is different kinds of breads. So really this is all pretty much only gonna affect the look of the breadcrumbs once they're toasted coming out, but it helps the uh, flouring come out pretty nicely. So I didn't want to admit it. Okay. Now we have this ready. I'm gonna go and crack into my two chicken. So I'm gonna be actually making this two slightly different ways. Same content, but slightly different. The first one is I'm gonna do a traditional like roll. And the other one, I'm just going to actually kind of just make a, basically a chicken sandwich. And the reason for that is, like I've learned a lot in the show, it seemed like something that was lazy at the time, but I actually found it, one, way easier to make it that way. But I actually, I enjoyed eating it a lot more because it stays together, whereas I feel like once you get, if you have like really nice creamy cheese, when you uh, roll it up and then you cut into it after cooking it, turns out the cheese is very gooey and awesome and just kind of squirts out. Whereas when I had it prepared just as a standalone breast without the rolling, then I felt that it was, came across as more of like a deluxe chicken breast instead of a kind of intricate thing. So I'm gonna cut this horizontally to split these up. I also like about this how you really only need one chicken breast if you're gonna make this for two people because you can easily split this entirely in half because the ham is going to make up for the rest. So just doing a side thing here. I've said this before, but it's good to repeat that. It's, when I'm going in like this, I make sure I replace the blade each time. It makes the cuts come out a little better. And I'll tell you, this is uh, where you can really start to tell the, uh, how good your knives are. Because when I do this at home, my knives are not good. And <laughs> it takes forever to cut that without uh, cutting myself. Okay, next I'm going to tenderize this. So, so I'm just gonna get some plastic wrap, put this over here. So I can go ahead and start whacking it with my meat tenderizer. So I'm going to use the uh, thin side. You can use this, but I feel like this is more for like beef. And I've always used this side just because it kind of works better for me. My strategy, and this is all just from my own uh, tenderizing knowledge, is I always try to think of it almost like you would use a rolling pin, where you are basically trying to hit to the center and push out. Like, I'm not just banging it randomly. If you look, it'll actually kind of like, I'm working the meat, I guess, outwards to get what I want. So I'm gonna go down to about a fourth of an inch, and we'll see. If you want like a really thick one, you can go that, but uh, particularly for the one you are going to roll, I heavily recommend going very thin because it will just be very hard to get a good roll and you can't do very many if it's thick, even if it might think, like you might think it looks better because it's nice and thick, it's actually kind of not. 
So I'm just going to start with here. This one looks like it's breaking down pretty quickly. Sometimes you can tell that the, some meat's just like tougher, for lack of a better word, where it really takes a lot of work. But like this one right here seems like it's breaking down pretty quick. Partially, I think one of the main reasons I see so many recipes cut it in half is just because, yeah, you could go tenderize an entire chicken breast, which is basically kind of what this thing's gonna be. It would just, it's gonna take way longer because of the surface area. So yeah, that's basically about as thin as I'm gonna want this one. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the same for this. This one's still pretty thick because of how it kind of came out. So this one might take a little bit longer. So actually, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to cut this section off so it's nice and consistent. Again, just trying to make a nice saw. This has also be one of like the most nice and therapeutic parts of making chicken cordon bleu. On previous shows and when I make this in my own kitchen, instead of say like this plastic wrap, I really like to use like an actual like Ziploc bag. And the benefit of that is I will do this say the night before. Like I'll get chicken breasts and I'll just tenderize them all. And then you, it's already sealed so I can just throw that straight into the fridge. So I'm just gonna go up and down the center and kind of work that out and then gradually move to the sides. I found that like really once you do this for a little while, you really start to get your own little tempo. Because you could do it faster. Like I could really just go crazy on this. But it's a lot better just to have like very consistent, very quick little taps all over. Again, I think of it kind of essentially the same thing as when you are using a rolling pin on dough. It's like you could technically like really throw your entire weight into it. But it's a lot more important to just kind of keep consistently and evenly applying a bunch of pressure. See if I can break this down a little bit more. I'm not against using the uh, spike side. It does seem to have a lot more abrasiveness. Like you can see, like it's going to make a lot shorter work of this thick one. But if I were to get it too thin using that, like say this one, if I use the uh, spike side on it, it will start to just tear. And that's not technically a bad thing. Like it doesn't ruin the quality of the meat, but it's not what I'm going for in this recipe, especially because if it tears too much then it's not going to be able to fold like I'm going to need it to in the next part. There's something where I never, I've never asked them, but when I was preparing like this recipe and I was making it like every couple nights, like my neighbors must have just thought I just bang on my kitchen table for hours on end because I would just do it every night and they don't know I'm making chicken cordon bleu. But uh, it's something I was very aware of. Looks like I've got another tough spot. Tenderizing meat was something that I really picked up as part of doing this show. I don't think I would have ever just done it if I didn't have a recipe that specifically called for it. But part of me now thinks that like, if I have the time, why not just go in and tenderize it and get kind of more of a consistent flavor. Or just the fact that I love that you can do it way ahead of time. Like that's something that is very important to me is being able to like get stuff done and out of the way and have it prepped. Especially because like on a, on the original test show for this show, what I had to do was I did uh, chicken cutlets, which is the same process, but uh, when you actually tenderize it down to be really thin, what you get then is chicken that cooks very quickly, so you can have like a meal that's really nice and fast and awesome when the time comes. Same with this, like I could see me just like kind of getting this done out of the way just because I want to have tenderized chicken. I don't know necessarily what I'd use it for yet. And then I'm like, you know what? I have some ham that's going bad. I got some uh, Swiss. I could spend probably only like 15 minutes making chicken cordon bleu. Okay, again, getting these fairly thin. I think this is going to be my rolled one. That's why I want it to be nice and thin, just based off how it kind of comes out. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Gonna move on to these. These should be 
pretty quick. Another thing about uh, tenderizing, I thought it'd be way more strenuous, like you just get tired. But as long as you keep it like the little taps, like it really isn't as bad as other things. Like, in my opinion, based off of some of the other episodes we've done, uh, rolling dough out and kneading it is so much more intensive. But you would think, uh, at least I would have thought, <laughs> banging a hammer on some meat would be more taxing than it is. Okay, let's cover this. I'm sure this is something where you can really have a lot of experience if you have done recipes like this a long time. Like I can even just see now how, oh, if I just knew a little bit more, you really could know these spots where it's like, oh, there's a lot of mass there. Let me just go do a nice, very big tap and you'll, you could probably drastically cut this time down. But I don't want to tear my chicken, so I'm kind of keep it fairly simple. Although it's a great thing that I would like experiment with at home is like sometimes just like, you know what, what if I just hit like the center really hard to get started? Or like, is that going to cause some other effect that I don't want? I'm gonna go ahead and lift up my wrap, put that down. Since it's rolled up, I'm gonna to have to season what's gonna be the inside separately, just because I can't do that later. So I'm gonna get some salt on all this. Pepper. I really like grinding it myself. So much so I'm meaning to get like a nice dedicated one where I can grind a whole lot because my arm <laughs> always gets tired when it like grinds pepper. Like, Ten rising meat, nah, that's not that bad. You know, kneading dough, it's fine. I, I've gotten used to it, but uh, something about just like this action over and over, your hand's just like not designed for it. <laughs> okay, final uh, seasoning is I have some basic Creole seasoning. This is something I actually had a coworker kind of turn me on. I had never used it in anything, but it's just a nice mix of a slight spiciness and a bunch of like various things that I know I would like to put in my food but I would never spend the time to go put so many different herbs and spices and all that on it. It's like, oh, it's kind of nice, I can just grab one and it gives me the flavor I kind of want without having to measure out all these small things. Okay, so next we are going to prepare these. I'm going to be rolling up this one right here. So I'm going to take my Baby Swiss. I chose Baby Swiss because it melts better. I'll put this right here. Take my ham. I went for fairly thick. I would usually go thinner if you're going to roll it, just because it helps the roll a little bit more. And then I have toothpicks. But it's really whatever you have around. Like That's kind of a thing I like about a lot of the recipes I try to do on the show is they're meant to be take whatever you have. Like There's ideal pieces you can have, but really, like I'm not a restaurant owner. I'm doing these like, what can I do to upgrade my current set of ingredients. Cool, so I'm just gonna take one of these, stick it all the way through. I'm actually gonna put a couple of these in just because this one came out a lot thicker. I want this to stay. And I'm gonna leave these toothpicks in all the way until I actually serve it. So I'm gonna bake it and everything in there. But that's just me. You can move it out before if you think it's going to stay. Cool, center that there. Oh, let's just season this after I do this. So for this one, I'm gonna take my Swiss slices, put them in. And again, I recognize this is probably a little bit non-standard, but I really found I, I actually liked this more when I was doing it as the sandwich. I know it, it just comes across easy, but I was like, man, that, again, it felt like more of a premium chicken breast. And we'll try and roll this one up too with just like a little bit. I think in the reality of like working with say chicken and just other kinds of meat, you can't really be consistent when it comes to tenderizing it. I suppose you could probably buy pre-tenderized chicken, that way you could get really nice squares, but I think realistically it's not uncommon that it doesn't come out exactly how you might want. And you have to have like, oh, this is a big one, this is a small one. But it's not a large deal at all. So I'm just gonna put those there. Just clean off my hands again. 
Now I'm going to re-season this one. This one should be pretty good because it's not as rolled. The other reason I like having the toothpicks in is it actually gives you somewhere nice to grip onto the chicken. Whereas once I dip it in all this stuff, it's going to be kind of hard to wrap around. Not because I can't grab something, but I want to be able to grab onto the chicken without dismantling my nice little roll. So I'm going to take this up and I'm going to bread it. I'm going to do actually flour, egg, and then the breadcrumb. And then I'm going to just dish it up into this pan. So I'm going to try and coat as much of this as possible. The toothpicks can make it a little bit hard to get in like this, but I'll usually just keep just a little bit over here. And then dust it. That way you get this here. Make sure these are going all the way through. Prep my pan. And just rotate it around. This is something you can spend as little or as much time on as you want. I'm not super into the bread crumbing and the breading and all that. For some people, I know that must, that makes it, it ties everything together. But for me, it's just like, I just want a nice, simple covering. But that is up to you and your preference. But it'll give it some nice little crunchiness once we fry it or bake it. So the same thing. Just going to keep going around. So I mean, the main thing that is tough for me when I'm doing this is trying to get the flour and the breadcrumbs to stick in such a good way that I'm not also rubbing off all of my seasoning. And a thing I've seen with this recipe is just how you kind of like deal with the problem of keeping the seasoning on. And so I've seen some people, what they'll do instead of necessarily salting all of their meat is they'll instead salt and pepper the flour so it picks it up with it. And I think that's a fine way. I feel like it can, it's a little hard to judge the amounts to put those in but it's a nice alternate. Cool. Normally I do this at my own kitchen, like right next to the uh, sink, because inevitably you basically just flour your entire hands with it. And it can be pretty messy, which is why I try to make a point to like, lay these out because that's something I learned where once you're going, you want to be able to do all of it because you're not really going to be able to stop halfway and, I don't know, answer the phone because the whole process to get unfloured, basically. So actually, speaking of that, let me toss out some more breadcrumbs. This is another one why, again, I kind of prefer this one. It's even though it's a kind of a lazy version of it, it's a little bit more straightforward. Like you'll notice like I can just kind of pour this straight on. And I found it a little bit simpler where if you wanted to go quick, I don't feel bad about necessarily skipping the whole rolling process. Also, this wouldn't be a too bad thing just to do it straight on, say, wherever you prepped it. It's just your own kind of preference. I feel like what I cook and how I cook is more determined by my kitchen sometimes than the actual recipe. Okay. So for this one, it's nice that you can also be even lazier. I'm just going to go over here and get these. I haven't tried it, but I would think I could actually brush this down with the egg wash instead, and that would, that would work a little bit easier. Whereas the rolling one really does lend itself to just getting it in there and rolling it around. There we go. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to just put this in the oven. It doesn't take that long because it's still pretty much fundamentally just a chicken breast. So it doesn't take every dick's amount of time. And I've never found the uh, 
like temperature to be anything you need to worry too much about, I usually do about 350. It was when I started cooking, I really thought that, like with baking, you have to be super specific. But uh, more and more, I'm just like, oh, I'll just put it in around like 350-ish and I'll just watch it. And then I'll do a lot better with that than I am to say, have to worry that it has to be exactly 400 degrees or exactly 320, not 400. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. At this point, if you don't want the uh, toothpicks, I would pull them out, but I like that they can kind of help it hold its form. Try to make them, I will say, try to make it so that they do stick out somewhat, because you want them to be obvious for later when you serve, which if you look at like the one I have right down here, as the chicken cooks, it, it could be easily mistaken just for some simple like bread crumbing. So I want to just kind of pull that out. An easy fix for that would obviously be get the uh, more sandwich style ones that have like the colorful tips on the ends. I'm just going to go ahead and serve this. Once they've been in for a little while, I'm going to go ahead and bring out and temp this. It is chicken, so I am looking for exactly 165. I worked in a place where we made a lot of chicken, and that was like the biggest thing that's like drilled into. Like steak, there's a whole like uh, range of different values you might want. Same with like pork and other stuff you can kind of get away with, but uh, chicken's the very hard, uh, this needs to be 165. Let's temp this. I'm just gonna go through and temp all of these, 166. I think the next like big uh, kitchen gadget I want is a nice instant read. That's 165, 170, and then this one's good. These are interesting because since they're not chicken all the way through, they will cook a little bit faster than your standard chicken breast. So it's something that I just like to kind of keep an eye on it. So let me loosen that up and bring out the plate. And this is just basically an entree. You could use, serve this with anything you would normally use a, with a chicken breast. I've been recently a fan of just mustard. So I think that's what I would kind of do. Like I have actually have for the next thing I'm cooking some horseradish mustard. So I think that's the thing I would most likely try next with this. But you can leave that up to whoever's having it. Toss this back in here. And we're going to go ahead and cut in. First off though, I want to make a point to remove all of my toothpicks. Now that I think about it, I should probably make a point and always put in exactly three or exactly two. Because now I could see how I'd be suspicious, like why does one have three and the other have two? That makes me think, oh, did I lose one somewhere? But yeah, it's not something that's occurred to me yet. And in worst case scenario, I don't think anyone's going to actually hurt themselves on the toothpick. But it's something I try to make a point with. So I'm going to cut this one kind of diagonally so we can see into it. Same with this, so you can see that nice little cross section for the pinwheel ones. Now, I wouldn't normally cut this because generally you're serving this pretty much as is to however you would do it. So you would generally say, here is the entire unit, and they would cut into it as they see fit. But uh, it's a cooking show, so it's fun to kind of show that off. Same with this, I'm just going to kind of cut lengthwise so we can see what it's like inside. And I want to talk about this one because like the one that's kind of stacked more like a sandwich, I had said at the opening of the show that I actually found that I prefer that because when you eat in, when you go to eat this one, it's a lot more like a standard chicken breast. You can just cut into it. It's just you have the uh, benefit of the ham and the cheese. Whereas I've noticed with these ones that are pinwheels, when you press down on top of them, the cheese is so much uh, more squished, it comes out. And by the end of it, you have essentially squeeze all of it out, particularly out the back end, because assumably you're working uh, like left to right or right to left. Whereas this, I feel like this is, to me, a lot more impressive. Like, I think I like the, irreg like the irregularity, I can't say that word, but the, uh, how non-regular it is, because it seems more like uh, this was a composed thing, and like I, it's homemade, whereas the one when it's rolled up, it actually it is, and this is just me, but it seems like when it's a perfect roll, it seems a little bit too like factory made, like it's not like a, home-cooked thing, whereas I like how this is just kind of a big stack of stuff. Plus, 
you can get a really nice, huge, thick slice of ham. And that's why I think I prefer this. Plus, it's just simpler. You could, if you wanted to have a sauce for this, you could actually serve it right on top. It wouldn't fall off like the rounded one. But I'll leave that up to you. I think the biggest takeaway uh, when I was prepping this and learning about it was that it was so much quicker than I actually expected. I thought this was going to be a big thing to go in and do all this. And then when I sat down and looked at it, it was the first impression. I was like, oh, this is like, like I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, probably less if you go ahead and like tenderize your chicken ahead of time. You could easily like pull this out quickly, just roll it all up, bread it, toss it in, and then you have a pretty nice, simple, interesting dish without it actually being a huge deal to prep ahead of time. Plus, I, again, in the uh, spirit of the show, chicken is extremely flexible. Same with ham. It's all stuff that I for once, I literally had all this in my kitchen before I even decided to go and make it. And that's just a cool thing to me, because that means like, this doesn't have to be a big thing. I can just do it. I could go home and I can make it again right now. I could just, you know, if I have someone that I forgot I invited over, and it's like, oh no, I need to quickly make something fancy just to uh, also give to them, I could easily do this in like that time. And it's just like a nice thing that I really think fills in that uh, niche of the show of these nice, fancy, interesting meals, but using common ingredients you would just otherwise have in your kitchen.